Straight ahead on OC News, former Cal State University Chancellor Charles Reed passes away at 75. Santa Ana declares itself a sanctuary city in defiance of President-elect Donald Trump. And today marks the 75th commemoration of the attack on Pearl Harbor. All this and much more on OC News. Welcome to OC News, the last OC News for the fall semester. I'm Sarah Fenton. And I'm Melina Joseph. OC News is brought to you by the Broadcast Journalism students at Cal State Fullerton. It's that time of year again and finals are just around the corner. Reporter Carolina Quixano has more information on how students are managing this time of year. As if studying for finals isn't stressful enough, many students have encountered a driving force attention on their way to school after the 210 freeway was closed for precautionary reasons. So, did you take the 210 this morning? No, I commute from Rancho Cucamonga, and I do take the 210. However, I didn't encounter the traffic, luckily. Okay, so you're on the 210. Did you see any traffic this morning? Or? I didn't. No, so you were there probably maybe a little bit earlier? Or? I was, probably. Okay, so, you, well, that's good. I don't, I take side streets, so luckily I didn't have to encounter any of that traffic on the 210, or, I mean, I know freeway just in general are insane in the morning, but I know Alan Huerta is live on campus with more on this story. Former Cal State Chancellor Charles B. Reed, who led the nation's largest university system for 14 years, died Tuesday at age 75. Reed was the sixth chancellor of the Cal State system from 1998 until his retirement in 2012 and remained chancellor emeritus. Current Cal State Chancellor Timothy P. White said in a statement, quote, Our thoughts and prayers are first and foremost with Ch Charlie's family and loved ones. Charlie will always be remembered as a formative figure in our university's history and as a tenacious, passionate champion of public higher education, end quote. Reed's family has established the Charles B. Reed Scholarship Fund for CSU students. In lieu of flowers, donations may be made to the scholarship fund at calstate.edu. Santa Ana City Council members voted to declare Orange County's second most populous city a sanctuary city, a largely symbolic gesture to protect protect immigrants who are in the country illegally. Council members, however, expressed support for making the resolution into an ordinance after dozens of community organizers urged them to do so during Tuesday's meeting. The ordinance may come up for a vote at the council's next meeting. Immigrant rights activists urged the council to prohibit the city from sharing information about people without legal status with federal officials. The move is in direct defiance of President-elect Donald Trump who was critical of illegal immigration and sanctuary cities during his campaign. Since the election resulted in Donald Trump as our new president, many students have been in living in fear of mass deportations. Our reporter Natalie Aguirre is live on campus to tell us how the new administration can affect DACA students. It has been 75 years since Japan devastated the American naval fleet anchored at Pearl Harbor in a surprise attack. In a statement about Wednesday's anniversary, President Obama said, quote, over 2,400 American patriots lost their lives in the attack on Pearl Harbor, end quote. Diane Gallagher has the details about today's special anniversary in this report. After the break, Marilyn Taylor will let us know whether we'll have sunny days or cloudy skies this week in weather. Also, we look into the beneficial cause of the Red Cross's blood drive here on campus and how it has helped save a student's life. All this and more coming up. The Red Cross has partnered up with Cal State Fullerton to encourage students to donate blood. Is there a correlation between participating in social events or being physically active and being able to memorize or remember things? A new study says so. Roxana Paul tells us more. Cal State Fullerton's Center for Healthy Neighborhoods sponsored a free community health fair for local residents. Over 20 nonprofit organizations participated. Vivian Chow tells us more. Up next, find out the personal information that Lady Gaga opened up about. And Fullerton's DJs are back to battle for a spot in the spring concert. Megal will be with us as well to talk about some hoops and football in sports. Stay tuned. After releasing his debut single, California State University student Ian Michael is on the road to stardom. Jillian Rulin has more on the story. 
it's time to make a trip around the NBA and we look ahead at a big matchup in the NFL as we go to Miguel Moya with sports. Hi and welcome to This Week in Sports. I'm Miguel Moya. With finals and the holidays coming up, there seems to be a lull in the sports, in the sports world, right? Wrong! John Wall and company show you why. Roll the highlights. Sweet. First quarter, Alfred Payton hits a shot and his hair and his shot have the same flow as he knocks down the three. Second quarter, Payton again drives to the basket, tosses up a shot, and draws the foul. Third quarter, Wall drives to the basket and hits the finger roll. Won't be the last time we see him. Wall from three hits nothing but net. Wall finished with 52 points on the night, but the magic answer back as Aaron Gordon steals the ball, passes it to a teammate who gives it right back and he slams it down in the Magic win, 124-116. Now let's go to Detroit as Ray John Rondo and the Bulls take on the Pistons. First quarter, Rondo drives to the basket, light as a feather, and he sinks the two. Second quarter, Jimmy Butler from the free throw line. Easy. Still, second quarter as Butler loses the ball. It's passed to Andre Drummond who throws it down with emphasis and the Pistons go on to win it. 102-91. Celebrate that win, fellas. You deserve it. All right, taking our talents to South Beach as Carmelo Anthony and the Knicks take on the Miami Heat. First quarter, a little hot potato between Porzingis and Noah and Porzingis with the slam. They are feeling that one back in Latvia. New York with the ball and alley-oop to Melo who throws it down. Melo with the ball again as he hits the turnaround jumper to end the half. Third quarter, guess who? It's Melo who bodies defenders to hit the tough shot. Knicks on the fast break. Porzingis can't finish it, but Melo, he can't be stopped. Melo finished that alley-oop big man as the Knicks win 114 to 103. Now, let's go to Minnesota where the weather is cold, but the Spurs are hot as they put their 12-0 road record on the, on the line against the T-Wolves. First quarter, Carl Anthony Towns drops back and hits the fadeaway two. And in the second quarter, Kawhi Leonard sinks a tough shot over defender. We're going to fast forward to the fourth quarter. Leonard, he's looking for the pass, nails a long three as the Spurs move to 13-0 on the road with their 105-91 win over Minnesota. With finals coming up, it reminds me of the old saying, C's get degrees, but in the NFL, C's are going a little further as Derek Carr, Amari Cooper, and Michael Crabtree and the 10-2 Raiders go to Kansas City to take on Eric Berry and the Red Hot Chiefs who have won seven of their last eight games, including a week six win against the Oakland Raiders. This game is a must win for both teams and a must watch for all fans as Oakland puts their 5-0 road record on the line as they battle to keep first place against the 9-3 Chiefs. Where have we seen this before? Nowhere, because most of the Thursday night games have been awful to watch this year, which means you do not want to miss this one. So get your popcorn ready see, to see Alex Smith go against the one and only, the Khalil Mack. Don't forget to watch Clay Thompson and the Warriors as they travel to Los Angeles to face Blake Griffin and the Clippers in this matchup of Western Conference Giants. Tip-off is at 7.30 p.m. That's it for me here. Happy holidays and happy sports to all. Back to Melina and Sarah at the desk. Google is going green in their new project. Imani Jackson will have the story and technology. And with Christmas around the corner, it's that time of giving back. Reporter Miranda Medina and Naomi Menzer have attended multiple events in the Fullerton community when we come back. New production from Amazon is changing the way people shop and Google is now in the energy game. Imani has the rest. A local nonprofit called Cortezón de Vida, our heart of love, funds money to orphanages in Mexico. The extent of their service does not end there. They encourage anyone and everyone to join them on this unique journey to meet the kids. Our reporter Miranda Medina tells us more. The holidays are right around the corner and if you need a last minute gift, the Holiday Crafts Fair has you covered. We have Naomi Menzer live in front of the Tyne Shops to give you all the details. 
That brings us to the end of our last show until next semester. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media handle using the handle at OCNewsCSUF. I'm Lena Joseph. And I'm Sarah Fenton. Have a great night, and we'll see you in the spring.